Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to welcome Professor Hegender Jim Verde. Welcome! Thank you for being here. Welcome! Thank you. It's a great pleasure and honor for me to uh, talk to you about this uh, uh, one of the great endeavors, uh, scientific endeavors of our time, uh, which is the Large Hadron Collider project at CERN. Uh, it's a collection of a very large collection of brilliant young minds. Uh, this experiment uh, was started about 20 years ago, and we have still got about 15, 20 years to go. So some of you guys might actually be uh, uh, harvesting the uh, scientific fruits from this experiment. So on the uh, slides you show, you see uh, the uh, accelerator in the center and the two of the large experiments, uh, CMS on the left-hand side and the ATLAS experiment on the right-hand side. Uh, these pictures were taken about a year ago. Uh, I will concentrate on the science and the project itself and give you an idea of uh, the science that's going to come out from the project. So let me start with uh, something which uh, uh, one of the goals of physics is to understand the wonderful variety of nature in a unified way. Uh, some of the greatest advances we have made as humans have been steps towards this goal. Uh, for example, we can uh, look at uh, uh, Newton probably uh, uh, watching an apple fall, and he made the connection that actually the moon is also falling on the Earth. And there he combined, unified if you wish, uh, the terrestrial uh, gravity and celestial gravity, gravity of the heavens. So that was one of the first uh, unifications, if you like. There are four fundamental forces which actually govern uh, nature, which uh, in the early moments of the Big Bang we consider uh, to be unified, to be the same. Is that really the, the truth or not? And this is one of the things that we'll be investigating. Another thing that happened in the uh, uh, 19th century was the unification of electricity and magnetism, which appear to be different phenomena, but we now call it electromagnetism. Uh, and also the combination of space-time geometry and uh, gravitation by Einstein in the general theory of uh, gravitation, and much later in the 20th century, uh, the unification of the weak interaction uh, and electromagnetism. Uh, electromagnetism is very familiar to us, uh, these magnets, uh, the uh, light poles repel and so on. Uh, whereas weak interaction, which powers the sun, is quite a different phenomenon. And in fact, they are, the maths behind them is exactly the same. So this is the notion. Uh, the last force, which I haven't mentioned, the fourth one, is a strong interaction, which holds the, uh, uh, the quarks inside the uh, protons and neutrons. Now, I wanted to show you this uh, slide, which was uh, the front cover of the Scientific American uh, at the turn of the millennium. And you can see that there are eight questions that it asks what science will know in 2050. So some of the issues uh, that have been mentioned by the previous speakers are on this list. And I will highlight the two ones which are shaded uh, in this talk. So uh, what we're trying to do is uh, uh, use accelerators. And the term used is particle physics. Now, particle physics is, uh, is a modern name. Uh, it's a modern name for a centuries old uh, effort to understand the basic and the fundamental laws of nature, uh, the interactions that I was talking to you about in a few minutes ago. Now, the aim is to answer two following questions. What are the elementary constituents of matter? And what are the forces that govern their behavior at the basic level? So that's what we're trying to do. Now, experimentally, I'm an experimental physicist. Uh, what we do is to get particles at high energies to crash into each other. And particles, new particles come out, and we try to understand uh, what has happened in the collisions. And from there, we deduce uh, what is happening uh, in terms of the forces and the uh, uh, particle behavior, if you like. So the aim, actually, is to measure the energy, the direction, and the identity of all the particles that are produced uh, as precisely as possible. So the aim is rather simple. The instruments are very complex. So you're all very familiar uh, with the fact that uh, all different elements are made out of atoms. And atoms have uh, electrons uh, uh, which are orbiting uh, a nucleus, a nucleus which contains protons and neutrons. 
and the protons and neutrons are composed of quarks. These are the most fundamental objects we know at the moment. So we've made great progress, and many fundamental questions have been answered, but there are quite a few questions still to be answered. Uh, and I'll allude to some of those, and some of you guys might be actually answering those questions. Now, there is a standard model of physics. This is probably the crowning achievement of the 20th century science. So everything is condensed into what we call the standard model of uh, particle physics, in fact. So it, it contains the quantum theories of, uh, of uh, electromagnetism, the weak interaction, and the strong interaction. The only one that is uh, missing is gravity. Uh, this is actually also a marriage of quantum mechanics and special relativity, which you might be familiar with, and the discovery of hundreds of particles, uh, which has led to this uh, standard model. It is a rather simple model, in a sense. Uh, it, on the left-hand side of this uh, uh, diagram, you see the matter particles. Uh, we have uh, U, D, uh, quarks, for example, in the first leftmost column, and that's all that is needed to actually explain the matter that you, me, and any object that you see is made of. But nature seems to have uh, given us two other generations, and we don't know the answer of uh, why it has given us those uh, extra generations. On the right-hand side, you have the messenger particles, which actually uh, transmit the force. The electromagnetic force is transmitted by photons, like particles, for example. And you have the uh, Ws and Zs, which were discovered about 30 years ago. Now, one of the problems is that we, I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, weak interaction, which powers the sun, and electromagnetism are unified. The mass is the same, yet the messenger particles have, uh, one has mass zero, the other one has a very high mass. And that is one of the fundamental questions. Why is there this difference? In fact, mass is something which, is, uh, which gives us substance, gives the universe substance. So in a sense, the standard model is a very beautiful theory. It has been checked to exquisite detail, uh, but we know it is not the whole truth. And that is what the endeavor of the LSE project is. Now, so we are poised to tackle some of the uh, profound questions in, in physics. Uh, in fact, it's Newton's unfinished business. Uh, you remember Newton actually said that the mass, uh, he had this formula, which is uh, F equals ma. For a given acceleration, if the mass is higher, high, then you have to give a higher force, higher kick, a stronger kick. So that was his uh, uh, definition of mass. Einstein had this relation, which is E equals mc squared, which you're quite familiar with. Uh, energy and mass are equivalent in convertible currencies, if you like. Uh, but they didn't actually tell us what, how mass comes about. So the gentleman on the right, uh, Mr. Higgs, has conjectured that there is a, a, a field uh, that pervades the universe, uh, and the particles, which are start off massless, interact with this field and acquire mass. The stronger the interaction, the larger the mass. This field is a quantum field, so there's a quantum associated with this uh, uh, field, which is called the Higgs boson. So you must have heard about the Higgs boson, which is sometimes referred to as the origin of mass. And as I've said, mass gives universe substance. Uh, for example, if they, we, we didn't have mass, there would be just puffs of radiation and we wouldn't exist as such. Now, the other thing is uh, there is a, uh, an embarrassment. Uh, the, the, all the matter that I've talked to you about uh, comprises about 4% of the uh, energy and matter 